Adam Bierman, Princeton TV, Facebook Live. We're on a Wednesday now. We're doing, a, a, uh, should I say, a long-time longitudinal study to see if Wednesday will bring more Facebook viewers. I'm going to have to talk to producer Sally Taslar if she can make it. She has this, this day job teaching kids, helping them. That's kind of lame. I hope just, I, you know, hopefully it won't get in the way of that. She can come on a Wednesday. You know, she, she has to have priorities. That's stuff, which I think is important. Uh, you have some exciting news, Lauren. Um, I was in Maine again because I'm a world traveler. And a we'll get traveler. that in a bit. But let's get to our, our guest of honor here. Come on. Are you dissing me? I'm oh, dissing you. I'm telling you. Hang on. I don't want to start off with dark military stuff. Come on. But well, you're going to put... Oh, oh okay. Okay. Oh, oh. Jo <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm offended. I'm, I'm hurt. I need a safe space. No, John Trotsky is an American college professor, an actor, stuntman, stunt coordinator. A wrestling champion. I like this part because I'm a star fucker. Excuse my friends. You can swear. Um, he's also a successful career as a stunt performer and coordinator. In 2007, he and Smooth Tommy, I love this name, Suede, trained Nicolas Cage and later Mickey Rourke in the lead, ro lead role in The Wrestler. You've also been in movies like uh, Tell Tell Tall, Tell Tell. Tell Tell. Thank Tell -tale you. Tell Heart. Josh Lucas, yeah, based on Edgar Allan Poe. You've done commercials. You've done stunt coordination for um, CS, CSI, a lot of TV and everything. Like, you're in the game. Again, Lauren, you found another person who's in the game game with also an internet presence and a following. Now, can we talk about your Blu-ray? <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to that in a second. But, yes, uh, John and I were starting a wrestling visit together on May 22nd of 1999. It's unbelievable. That's we wrestled in a little place called uh, Malvern Fire Hall. Uh, it was awesome as well as disastrous because <laughs> oh, you were managing him. No, I was managing another guy named Garrett, and um, we wrestled against him. And as much I as we kind were, of that age back then, yes. Oh, look at that! And once, once we uh, even though we were green and Supreme, moving, uh, supremely moving green. 100 miles per hour and finishing move after finishing move. I still think we had the best match when you look at it compared to who was on the card. So, and then from there. We had our ups, we and downs, and uh, eventually I faded out by 04. This man's still going. He's got his own wrestling school. Uh, towered career, but uh, I haven't seen this guy in a good, I think, since 03. Yeah, it's been a while. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. So welcome to the show. This is a big difference. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We, we, we kind nice. of both, we're more Princeton growing up. Princeton University, it's yeah. all nice. This is why you're getting yeah. nostalgia, I guess, back in the green room, though. So yes. you guys have a serious history during your younger, wilder days. And you're still, and also, and like, how did you reconnect? You said, like, this is a show that this guy, Adam Beerman's good looking, great. Uh, I'm for, That's actually, that was, that was my main reason. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, it was, uh, honestly, we just reconnected online. Okay. And, uh, you know, I was telling him about it. I sent him a link to one of the, one of the shows. I was like, yo, you know. Always mm. looking for guests. Yeah, Lauren's and really it, been building up this show, really. I, I just take credit for having, you know, he's been, no, slowly, but a lot of people have been watching. So it's yeah, and second. then this guy's got like a church, like an old church. The sanctuary. Old, the sanctuary. The sanctuary. I thought yeah, you were yeah. talking about The Hobbit or some kind of movie when you kept on talking about the sanctuary. <laughs> no, think yeah. about it, a sanctuary. A sanctuary. Church, it's a perfect name. Yeah. Okay, so I'm a little confused. He's done, you're like a, a renaissance man, a renaissance man. So you've done some, what do you do? Who? So what's, what's he doing now? What's happening? You're Why don't you ask stuff? him? Was, John, oh. what are you doing these I'm days? I'm scared because you, you you told me I was doing things wrong, and now I'm I'm this subservient like role right now because I am really tired. I don't know why, and I'm not like I'm not projecting. Maybe I should be more manly. No. I do. I, I was talking. We were talking about posture before we came we on were. here about yeah. we sitting were. straight. Okay. And how how fat tough. this shirt makes me okay, look. Okay, like God, I looked great in it ten years ago. <laughs> yeah. You look pretty strong now. I was wondering if we could wrestle, but I don't think we, we're geared for that no, right now and everything. No. So, so what what are you doing? You you, you teach. You're a teacher. Penn yes, State yes. Berks. Penn State University. Penn State uh, Berks and Hazelton campuses. What do you teach? Uh, instructional technology, instructional design, computer sciences, how to build a computer, uh, graphic design classes, like an art class, like a, just a, a Photoshop kind of base class, uh, a web design class for building websites, video productions incorporated into that. A lot of other things that are new media, like we're doing right now. Mm -hmm. um, Stuff like that. Um, that that's my main subject areas I cover in the IST department of Penn State. So you also kind of knew smartly in a small way. Don't depend on the wrestling business because the only way you're really going to make money is if you're working for Vince himself. To 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 any of the kids at home that are professional wrestlers, um, mm -hmm. 
follow your dreams, but have a backup plan. Yes. Um, I'm probably one of the most successful guys I know in the professional wrestling business from the time that I came in it that didn't actually make it to WWE. Mm -hmm. And if I would have had to depend on the amount of money I made in pro wrestling, I'd be dead today. What yeah. kind like of sucker are you on then? This is, this, like is a AAA sucker? this is independent. Right? Now, no, this is a nice one. This is where I'm over in Italy. This is, uh, there's 20 and 30,000 people over there. I got very, very lucky in, in 2005 I did. Uh, a couple tours, like six or seven tours mm -hmm. over in Italy. And uh, it was it was a tremendous, tremendous experience because we, from being in the professional wrestling business, the one thing that you really understood was it was about the energy yes. of that connection with the audience. It's and, all it's about. And about manipulating that audience. And it and there used to be a phrase in wrestling, it doesn't matter if there's five people out there or 500 people out there or 5,000 people out there. That's bullshit. Uh, if there's... If there's <laughs> For performance-wise, that's great. But when you're talking about energy-wise, mm -hmm. there is no drug, there is no high, there is no anything that will ever make you feel what it's like to stand on a rope in front of twenty and 30,000 people on the opening card of the match when they're all fresh to see wrestling. Mm -hmm. And that you come out there, and I was wrestling uh, I was in red, white, and blue and had this thing said Hero Across Me, and I was wrestling at the time, it was 2005, so the, an Arab terrorist sort of character. And then I go to the top rope and... 30,000 people stand up and explode because A, it's the first thing they're seeing. B, it doesn't matter who I'm doing. It, it, it's right after 9-11 and all that. Yeah. So it's all of that energy carried right into that, into the into our opening match on that. And the energy of knowing how to to work that audience yes. is yep. and 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 it's it's way different on the on the bigger scale, on, on that 10 and 20,000 person scale, mm -hmm. because it's 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 like a roar. It's like a wave. It comes in 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 layers as opposed to and on indie wrestling. It's like yeah, I got a pop. You know, it's like and, and yeah. you're usually happy about that. And you also got your kind of like your outline of what you're plan preparing to do. But also when you get out there, you see other waves to ride. Versus, That's it. And yeah, and and, all... and I'm actually currently tied up in a in a court case with the state of Pennsylvania over whether uh, professional wrestling is a sport or not. Oh, really? um, they're so still, still I've, I've beat them once in court already, which is fantastic. Uh, we're we're going to a round two, which I'm. Why is there litigation have, on yes. that subject, though? They is want it, to, so, so well, God, absolutely. Yeah, always, so right? in okay. the state of Pennsylvania, we are a regulated sport of of uh, professional wrestling, as well as boxing, MMA, and kickboxing. Uh, kickboxing, MMA, and boxing made the state athletic commission about four hundred thousand dollars last year. Professional wrestling made it about three hundred fifty thousand. So when it literally pro wrestling is half of the budget versus all of the other sports combined, wow. mm. the Pennsylvania State Athletic Commission's budget to continue doing things is around a half of a million. So if you took away the pro wrestling side of it, they're in trouble. Right, right, right. Half of so my argument essentially was, okay, pro wrestling's fake, and I'm willing in the year 2018 willing to admit that, especially now that I'm a stunt coordinator and a stunt man, and I understand how different worlds of play fighting work, other than the real sport of wrestling, which I was a uh, Second place, in the Keystone, champion? Okay. second place in the Keystone State Games, mm -hmm. and I was a district champion. I placed in regionals and stuff like that. I was a strong amateur wrestler back in the day. And I know how the sport of wrestling works. And that is something where I'm going in there and I am engaging in a sporting and athletic competition, trying to do damage to my opponent or win the match and, and, and in them on the mat. In even at the time when we were doing it, mm -hmm. uh, there was we always knew who was winning and losing. Yes. Um, I would say that there was specifically at the time that we were doing it, we were doing more of that super indie trend, which was you had to have a script. You had to have pretty much a bullet point by bullet point by bullet point by bullet point how you're going to go about your match. Um, what true pro wrestling is, though, is what I learned over in Italy, which is one of the coolest things in the world, which is you can have that script, but the script really doesn't matter. It's about you, your opponent, and the audience. Mm -hmm. And, and it's then about the strings as it goes. Correct. Yeah, right. And uh, since we're allowed to say some non PG things on here, yeah. I, I kind of compare it to two guys double teaming a chick. And it literally is both of us are in control, and it's all about working her. Right, right. And and that is that is she's reacting. that is it is all and it's all about the reactions. That's a beautiful metaphor. It, it, <laughs> it it's yeah. pro wrestling psychology. Movie psychology, which yep. you guys are all very understanding of, uh, book psychology, music psychology, all of those things are based off of Donald, one thing. Donald Trump did it too. We, we, sex. Of sex. Oh, sex. Sex. I'm going to tell you why. Okay. If you know, now, kids at home, in case you don't know how sex <laughs> operates, um, the There's pattern a stork. of it, the, There's a stork. the pattern of it is generally like this, is that you kind of start off kind of hot and fast, 
but if you keep doing that, you're going to finish too soon, and yes. that's a squash match in pro wrestling. <laughs> um, so you have to bring it's down crop, the pace. It's a crop yes. failure. And, in, in and then it's matter. all about getting to that point of good mm -hmm. and then bringing it up and down to, right. the, to the, like, down. Okay, we're, we can't finish here, so we're going to go down for a little bit and do X, Y, and Z until we're going to get back up to that pace. Right. And then we're going to bring it down. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's, it's the hero it's a, arc. It's, 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 it's titillation, too. It's expectation. Which eventually leads to, at the end of the day, what are we trying to seek in the a journey? Massive orgasm. We're trying to seek that through the, through the sex part of it. But in the story, we want the good guy to win. That's what we want in pro wrestling. That's why we came out to see. We came out to see the hero win. When we go out to see a movie, we came out to see Iron Man win at the end of it. That's yeah. why Infinity War is so cool. Because it kind of was like, oh, you, you had me here and... You left me. You left me. You left me. And, and when that's, the next movie comes out, all that magic is all of that <laughs> all out the window. <laughs> but yeah. So the uh, the whole point of this is though, all of this follows the same pattern as pro wrestling, which is start it off hot, bring it down, hit your peaks and your valleys in between, lead to the comeback moment in the match where mm -hmm. the go home moment, the good guys coming in, bump, bump, bump. Here we go, big finish, bump. Mm -hmm. That's sex. That's sex, and yeah, so is yeah. the movie. When you're watching the movie, it's not action through the entire thing, unless it's a Michael Bay movie. Mm -hmm. But I mean, it's <laughs> it's 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 generally you, you you start off with some sort of an action sequence or some sort of an event that gets you hooked into the event, and then it's about how do we get that character back to square with the ebb and the flow, some twists in the story. Could there be a possible disaster? Right, so right. pro wrestling movies. Music, same thing. Music starts off with that little hook in the song that you like. Mm -hmm. Goes down the refrain. They're talking for a little bit. Comes back to that hook. Goes down. Uh, refrain, refrain, bridge. Yeah. Finish. You know yeah. what I mean? It's and same thing in pro wrestling. Falsy in the end, where the good. Oh no, he's gonna come back. Oh, he might turn around. That sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Same thing in a movie. It's like that moment when the villain. Oh no, he turned it all around. Oh, the good guy still won. Still yeah, get to yeah. still get off. Um, but I digress on all this as far as the. Pro wrestling and all that. And now it's learned in Italy, though. So it was you kind of had a general idea then in Italy, but then that you were, you were in Italy. Did, all right, so that's exactly where I want to get back to. Is Italy taught me how to be a professional wrestler? A professional wrestler, in my if you ask me to define what a professional wrestler is, okay. it is a wrestler mm -hmm. who does a profetish a professional courtesy of not hurting you. And it's it, well, it should take skill. It, that takes it, skill. Yeah. Correct. Yes. It should take two guys yeah. though that know how to dance. do this right. and dance. dance. Yes. And and play guitar versus what I believe is currently in professional wrestling today and what me and Garrett were at the time, mm -hmm. Guitar Hero. A yeah. B C D A B D D A B and and that and that's Moving it. Moving hundred miles per hour. And yeah. we're just going from yeah. segment frenetic, to frenetic, segment to segment, segment to segment. So it's frenetic and but yeah, right, right. Pro wrestling is a true art, and I think it's dead. <laughs> like, like I if think you, it is too. I think if well, you're asking me, well, and that's that's my whole point well, in court is. Well, it's I gone. definitely want to get to that, but it's also at the same time as like you use the f word, fake, and I, of course. But I also say that we are, we were a choreographed stunt show. Absolutely. I always hate it when someone's like, oh, "It's fake." Like, no, doing doing these moves. Slippery people, sweat, the sweat. People got hurt. People can get hurt. It's the same thing with stunts in movies. It's like, yeah. oh, well, it's a stunt guy. A guy fell over a car. That guy still rolled over metal and yeah, exactly. hit the ground. And, and they it, still there's died. Still nothing, there's nothing fake about it. It's right. just you I, know it's going to happen. I agree with that, but I think there's something else in pro wrestling that is also dead now, which is called kayfabe. Um, Without a doubt. Kayfabe is why a state like Pennsylvania would regulate professional wrestling. Mm -hmm. Because kayfabe is the idea of Whatever we do, we have to make sure everybody believes this is real. And this can bring us up to segments like when Vader well, who, would, who would, it would do that interview and he punched the guy in the face. That's right. He was like, is this face? Is this fake? Yep. And you'd see guys like Vader. Literally, I just saw a clip of him with Ken Shamrock after he yeah, died. Yeah, and he came he that beat form. the shit out of him in the ring. Yeah, really? Because in professional oh, wrestling, ring. back before, pretty much exactly when I joined is when it changed. Uh-huh. But anything before my time uh -huh. was Fucking damn close to real. And it was real. You real had your moments. Where they're, they're really got, going like that. Well, I mean, it, no, it, it, it I, I think we, it depends. It depends on the worker. Worker. But there is absolutely allowed that I'm allowed to go in there. Like if you and me said, hey, let's go in there tonight and beat the shit out of each other. You know? Yeah. Oh, I see. I, you, or, or if we just didn't really like each other, even if the promoter wasn't. Like, you know, he gets me. All right, we're doing this tonight. All right. The only professional courtesy come out the real. Yeah, the only professional courtesy at that point would be, I know you're going to win, or you know I'm going to win. Right, right. But the rest of that might be. 
a 75 to 80 percent legitimate yeah, shoot. And when fight. the crowd's looking around like right. this looks, Jesus. Uh, yeah. But that was good for business. That was. That was what pro wrestling was. I that remember, was the magic. I remember Bruno. I go even way back. Bruno Sammartino bloodying someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you didn't get those cauliflower ears from nothing. Yeah, you know? I was just gonna say a cauliflower ear doesn't. There's nothing fake about a cauliflower ear. Yeah. So there was a time. I think that you could argue that professional wrestling was real. And if we're going to go truly historically where professional wrestling started, the carnivals. Yes. It was the answer to the town who, like, back in the 1920s, there was professional boxing. So you could go make a living on professional boxing. You can make a living on professional baseball or professional anything except for professional wrestling. So all of the town's big hillbilly hicks ended up having to kind of join the carnivals and get mm -hmm. the good ones because they became what's known as a shooter. Mm -hmm. And then there was like guys that became like all Americans and then they joined and they became what was known as a hooker. And that was a person that was like your shooter, shooter, the person that could tear anybody apart in wrestling. And the carnivals would literally take their hookers and their shooters and place them in the main event in an open challenge against the town's best wrestler. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And, it's and the carnies would place bets on it because there was no regulation in the carnivals back then. And as they were just surveying the crowd and seeing how the bets were going, <laughs> If everybody was betting on the town's hometown hero and nobody was betting on the on, on the carnival guy, the carnival guy was probably an all-American that could have tied him up, one. Or two, they'd have a conversation with the town's hometown hero backstage yeah. and say, look, kid, you have no future. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to pay you $100 back then, which $100 back then is thousands, right, you I'm know like, what I mean? Depression. Like, yep. to, to do a dive tonight. Uh -huh. and, and, and we'll make it look real close. We'll be like, oh, it was that close, man. Yeah. That's how professional wrestling worked back then. Oh, and they literally the could, have had, the they could have had a contest where there was five or six real wrestling matches. But who cares? <laughs> Let the undercard be the undercard. But people came to see that main event. And it had nothing to do with pro wrestling. It had everything to do with this, 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 the legitimate sport. They believed it was, it, they believed it was real. Mm -hmm. So the carnies took advantage of them. Right, and the carnies could make money and then go. Exactly, and right. then they're to the next town, and yeah. you can't you can't catch up with the work. Right, right. So you were uh, you you trained originally with the Samoans, yes, in, in Hazleton. Yes. How long there with Dave Batista? That's right. Are so, that real Samoans? Yes, yeah, absolutely. The, the, the Samoans that you grew up with, the, the yeah. wild Samoans yeah, 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 in the seventies, yeah, yeah. the tag champions. When was the like how long? I, so you went a while. I followed you for a bit, then I dropped off. When did the sanctuary? Give us the origin of sanctuary. Right. How that even? Um, so from the Samoans, uh, which was a very I joined there in 1999, right. right after I did the stuff with you guys. Yes. And, and for the record, I'm going to say this too to anybody that else is watching this. If you're a backyarder and you are untrained, don't do that. That's no. how I came in the business, and I was incredible. No. I could have hurt myself. I we, had, we had an opportunity. We and I could have killed it. somebody. And we, and we went to schools too eventually. Yeah. So yeah it, was, it was an opportunity I took because I needed – because when you're passionate, you just need to get in the business. But yeah. I went from backyard into the business yeah, the and then got trained. Those backyard yeah. people get on those stupid videos where they, they, they show them breaking their back, cracking we, their head. We, for our record, we weren't – Doing two, we were actually trying to wrestle. We yeah, were, we weren't like <laughs> I wasn't doing. Garrett was the one that did more crazier stunts yeah. of jumping off yeah. stuff. That you was guys never were actually my, trying yeah. to learn to move. Yeah, my my least. my stuff was a lot more, and Garrett's too. Like when we were for the most Those part, kids that are just jumping off the roof. Yeah, yeah, and try, you're just like Whoa, they're, 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 they're unprofessional stuntmen. At yeah, this point. yeah they're, they're, they're don't they're, even plan anything. Degrees, how far they're falling, falling, what they're gonna fall they're, on. They they're, they are unprofessional stuntmen and unprofessional wrestlers. They're just crazy. And they're all and they're the rest of their life. And they're done. And and they can get hurt for the Every rest of their life. life. Yeah. I got hurt with a hip toss from Gene Snitsky. I got a, a, a beal out of the corner, we used to call it. It was one, two slide and then big hip toss. Mm -hmm. Except he did it instead of like underneath the arm, he yeah. gave the, the that palm under the armpit to give me the extra mm -hmm. height. I did not stretch. I did not do anything before and I literally slid in the ring, did that because he was giving guys hip tosses and everybody was taking them wrong. He's like, John, get in here and do it. So I take it. I over rotate it, landed on my, on my butt on it broke three discs in my back oh and my they're God. still out today and I've had that's I, right man. It's, I, and then because and of the time that, that, was, that was at training that was at training just in this a, training so that's saying he's talking about backyard it's still happening in, it's happening in, in training ring. yes and be, but again when we talk about kayfabe and the mentality of the time I'm the head trainer of the wild Samoan training center and at the time it's a big deal mm -hmm. you can't stop training you got all these no. kids now looking at you yeah. going you hurt John no Yep. Uh -huh. You know, yeah. and then I wrestled and trained for two hours on a broken, which is things that in the year 2018, 
if I saw anybody even remotely hurt the snake, stop, we're yeah, done. Yeah, you're, you're, we're, yeah. Go to the doctor, go to the, and, and like things that I require any of my students, you have to have health insurance. Yeah. Uh, my pat, like my rings, you, you remember back in the day, the wrestling ring could have been a carpet on the goddamn Could have been. And they were something that used to be a, a spring-based ring, which is one, two, three, four, your main four, four poles. And then they'd have four other points in the middle of those poles that would all interform a cross section in the middle that would have a spring that would have mm -hmm. some give. That was the old school WWF style ring. And that's the one if you ever read Mick Foley's book after he took the Hell in the Cell fall. He's there, you know, a lot of people love the big dive I took off the top of the Hell in the Cell. But he's there, the boys appreciated the one where I took it from the cell onto the ring. Because at least you have the table breaking your fall yeah. in, in that. That goddamn WWF ring had zero give. Uh -huh. So back in the day, that's another thing too in my argument between what's pro wrestling and what's not today. Yeah. Those rings were a boxing ring, a, a, a converted version of a boxing ring that had as much as a rug to one inch of the padding on it that you're going to get hurt on. Yes. Nowadays, the things that I'd say most independents use are what are known as flexi beam rings, which are four poles and then a 16-foot or an 18-foot section that would go around it and then 16 and 18-foot sections that form cross sections that they put then uh, big, long 16-foot pieces of uh, two-by-four on top of, which causes actually kind of a trampolining effect, which gives a lot of bounce. Most indies today, I'd say use one to two inches of padding, never really two, usually one. Uh, the Sanctuary, we have four inches of padding. It, okay. it, I, it literally is the stuff that little kids, if you had them doing like the parallel bars for gymnastics, mm -hmm. if a little girl fell off that, she'd land on that four inches. Well, that, yeah, exact that. same thing. Uh, the Sanctuary- the Origin. All right, so yeah, that, that's yeah, where I'm going okay, to it. Okay, I didn't it, know. Is the Sanctuary's origin, and I need, to under, need you guys to understand the difference between pro wrestling and stunts now, and, and understand the difference between where pro wrestling was versus where I'm trying to take it now. Okay. So if we live in the world that we accept and acknowledge, professional wrestling is a fake, scripted, choreographed entertainment, why are we still using stiff rings? Why are mm -hmm. we still using four, uh, you know, one inch of padding? Why are we not, why are we still beating each other up in there? Why are we, if we get hurt, why are we still wrestling through the matches? Why are all these things happening that wouldn't ever happen in stunts? If I was on set yes. and I punched somebody in the face, the director's yelling cut, yep. and we're and we're and everybody's checking on the doctors. Yep. Do you have a concussion? Are you yeah, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All of that. Yep. That's how movies work. And it's when we talk about what's the difference between pro wrestling and stunts, and I think the state's case is, well, there is almost no difference between pro wrestling and stunts. That's because you don't know what you're talking about. There is a difference, and it's pure and simple about the safety. If I'm gonna punch you in uh come here, that camera's on here. Now you're gonna look this way and you're gonna whip your head that way. When I crossed his line that way, the camera's not gonna see that I missed him by that much. Right. Yep. In pro wrestling, I have to make contact. You know, and I usually, if the crowd doesn't believe me, I have to make contact hard. Back to the origins of the sanctuary now. Sanctuary was my vision after I trained Mickey Work for the movie The Wrestler, which was my exit from pro wrestling and became a stuntman. Okay. That was 2003. Uh, that Darren was 2007. Six, seven, seven. Six, seven, around that time. Yeah. Uh, and then I, I, I did stunts for about five, six years. Uh, I came back to the Wild Samoan Training Center, trained a kid, and got really behind this kid and helped make a, a good career for him. And uh, things didn't work out with that. And it turned into a situation where I was like, man, I can, I can bang out a lot of really good guys still. I still have the ability as a trainer to train a lot of really talented guys. And I could start training them to the way that I feel the business needs to shift. Versus where it's went now. Where it's went today, again, is... That super indie shit that you, you all of us did, which mm -hmm. is the da 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 and it's become Power Rangers. It's become no moves work. No. Nobody respects it's, a punch. It's a, nobody respects a hammerlock. Too, too many finishing moves in a row. So a hammerlock. So a hammerlock is what police arrest people with. They they grab the guy's yeah, arm yeah, and they yeah, wrench yeah, it up. Yeah. And in pro wrestling, it's just a transitional move. Yeah. That's a finishing move. Yes. In amateur wrestling, a headlock I beat most of my people with. Uh -huh. That's a finishing move in pro wrestling. Uh, so we'll transition from this to this to this. This to WWE, this. the Vince yes. McMahon. The, 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 and independent wrestling. Yes. And, and that's where the business has become. I want to drag, almost hit the reset on pro wrestling and say, let's drag you guys back to the reality that we have to follow on, on a movie set. Unless it is Power Rangers. Yeah, yeah. But if it's if it's Bruce Willis versus, you know, yeah. Thug on the Street, we're not doing all of this crazy sequential, da, 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 and Bruce takes a power bomb on the, on the concrete. No, we're scripting this fight like a true fight should be able to play out, that people should believe it. Because if the idea of professional wrestling is that you believe the fight, like that, the idea of kayfabe, why are we taking it in a direction that's less and less and less and less believable? Mm -hmm. So after training that kid that way, and that kid pretty much said, your way's wrong, and 
I'm going the direction of all this A, B, C, D, A, B, D, D, A. And, and he's doing well with it, but I just don't respect and I don't like the style of professional wrestling today. And because uh -huh. it reminds me of when I was a mark yeah. and, and when I thought, oh, this is how wrestling should be. And I was wrong. And, and I'm trying, the, the origin of the sanctuary is I bought the church because I saw it on sale and, and, I, and I, I, I negotiated it down for an incredible price. <laughs> um, and where did you put down mats? And ooh, I, I owned a ring at the time. I owned actually the old, uh, the old Wild Simone ring that I was wrestling in there. I owned two of them, uh, two former WWF rings. I think one's like a WrestleMania 3 ring and one of them's like a WrestleMania 10 ring. So like I have two legendary pieces of professional wrestling in there that are no longer used for any professional wrestling or stunt related reason. They are, the, the, the 20 foot by 20 foot is now the stage mm -hmm. that I just let guys come out on. And then the 16 by 16, that used to be a 20 by 20, but they cut it down, is now a rampway to the ring. Okay. And then the ring is the flexi beam, it, gotcha. it is all that. Um, what year did you end up by, uh, 2012 is okay. when, or no, sorry, 2013 or okay. 14, in, in this ring, 13, 14 is when I bought the sanctuary. Uh, I did try to run a professional wrestling company for, I'd say, about a year or two with it. And I, because I was going to be sanctuary, wrestling's last hope. Okay. And, and it was, it was going to be the, the and, and, and I went with a lot of like big guys, like guys that look like pro wrestlers, mm -hmm. guys that you, you wouldn't, as a fan, you wouldn't walk up to and go, you know, yeah, and yeah. if you did, yeah. you'd look at the guy and go, okay, I'm going to sit down back in my chair now. Because mm -hmm. I think one of the things that me and Garrett did wrong, and I think our entire generation did wrong, is, we were part of the generation that introduced, you could be a pro wrestler too, uh, kid. I know, I know. You could be in 1999. That time it was, anybody can be a pro wrestler. And there it's like the millennial. There were smaller than us. I mean, we, and, you know, you were like, wow. No, not anybody can be a pro wrestler. You're right. There was a reason why Andre the Giant was, Andre the Hulk Hogan was. And all these guys, is because they were larger than life right. superstars. You, you, you didn't want to look at someone coming around and be like, I could take him. Yeah. Yeah. You want to know that that's, if you went out to so the bar with them afterwards. There's casting call. There's a casting Oh, in, yeah. in pro wrestling back for, in the day? For sure. when, we, when, when me and him started, we were always like, we're, 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 we're slicker, we're faster, we could do more moves, give us the ball, give us the ball. And then eventually I went back the other way of like, a guy should be 6'7 and 300 mm -hmm. pounds. That's it's, it's, be able to I throw completely you shifted. Yeah. It's because I was a fan and I wanted to be part of it. Yes. And, and, and we wanted just so desperately. We wanted the yield to yield to us, is what we did. It, and that. what happened is the business did yield yeah. to all of us. It was like the ants attacking the cricket. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like all the ants overran it. Yep. And now you got a business filled with ants, and it's like, well, this sucks. I want to see the two crickets fight. Well, yeah. we got no crickets left because they they don't they don't do it anymore. And yeah. if and if they do do it, they they don't do it the way that the cricket should do it. The cricket's now trying to conform to the way the ant does it. Mm -hmm. And the big show doesn't need to be doing a moonsault. The big show doesn't need to be doing sequence and shit. Big show needs a punch a man, and that's why I love the fact that his, his finisher is a punch to the face. Because <laughs> if the big show punches you uh, in the face, yeah. you're getting knocked the fuck out. Yeah, he's yeah. over seven foot. Yeah, yeah, he's a big big dude. So how, how do you, here's a question, because I don't, I don't know, like I said, I have not, I have not seen Monday Night Raw or nothing in, in over 12 years, I, easy. So how do you, how is it, because I mean, we were probably, we were wrong the way we came into the mm -hmm. business. How do you feel when a kid comes in and he's like, I'm the best thing in the world, wrestling needs me, yada, yada. How do you handle that? Patiently. Yeah patiently because every it's like god is punishing me by <laughs> handing me you me back in the day. and and garrett but and they're so excited they were goal they were dream they were dream it, yeah, yeah. and i will not stifle the dream and i gotta find the way to com compartmentalize but you know sure, grab sure, that passion be realistic, be realistic, I'm, 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 also, I'm pretty sure though you've had a had your moment as me and garrett did of someone let you know what you're doing wrong, maybe even the hard way. Oh, I'm I'm known as that guy. And, no, but I'm and, talking. It had happened probably to you as it happened to us. Like your your, your attitude's wrong. We've got a way of, of showing you. Right. Is that part still happening? Right, so you're uh, saying like, did, so do I ever do I ever shoot on a kid and beat move. the shit out of them? No. Right, so I, oh, or no. Did, yeah. No. no. Okay. Back in all right. So in pro wrestling, what you're infer what you're basically saying is, you know, there was guys like the the Rock and Rebel who just murdered his yes, wife that and piece of shit. Yeah, that that guy and then himself. Yes. He would have been one of the guys that would have came in there and is it would have literally beat the shit out of a shoot in the in the ring mm -hmm. and probably would not have been the one to tell us why. And somebody else would have came and yes. told us why that happened. Yep. And it's because your attitude, because you, you didn't shake somebody's hand before you came, or because you were and it was a weird business. It was yep. I, again in in and the rebel I got I, I won a match and because I 
uh, I was a main inventor of a company and the promoter believed in me, but I cut a promo that literally in a building that probably had 50 people in it, I made 10 leave because of my promo. Uh -huh. So I crossed the line, but that pissed Rebel off so much that he literally, after the match, came down with a, a bunch of guys who just started attacking me, and I'm just like, all right, I'll work with it. They hold me up and just, he unloads a steel chair shot against the top of my head, what? full blown, see the big white flash, uh -huh. I get the concussion, I have to just roll out of the ring. Like it, and, and that was the type of business it was then, yeah. and it's not. It and, and and now, if you say like in the it's sanctuary, like, it's like insurance for all. Yeah, it's, everybody <sighs> sues everybody. But I I am I'm I'm doing the business now as if what if a professional movie studio took over professional wrestling and said, "This is the way we're going to do it from now on," because the way you guys are doing it is West. dangerous. Is 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 in, is just it's insane. Again, like the idea. So that, I guess to answer my question, there's no real way of doing that. But wait, you did, but we just about what well, kind of you know tough stretching. love. So I yeah. here's here's something I've learned from my mother. Um, <laughs> you know, my father has exactly. never beat me, but my father could beat the shit out of me, and it never less never would have sunk into me. My mother knows how to mentally destroy me <laughs> with words, uh -huh. um, and I I've I've done basically the same thing now with all of my guys, and I think the best thing that I do to them is speak honestly, like I am to you. And just tell them how fucking incompetent they are and how stupid they looked mm -hmm. and how bad they suck. And 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 just be like, oh, do you see how great I did X, Y, and Z? Okay, let's go watch the tape. And I'm, I almost intentionally ignore the things that I'm going to put over to them because they're just going to mark out for themselves. And I, you know what you did right because yeah. that's why you're here to hear me say good job for this. That's not why I'm here. It's my job as your trainer and as your teacher to show you this is where you suck, this is where you suck, this is where you... And every time they all come in all... All proud of themselves before their or after their matches. Then after they leave, them, fucking Trotsky's an asshole. You know, like like yeah. every and so. But if they I've, keep coming back, it shows they have to not. They want. Yeah, get I've I've at, I'd say the sanctuary. You know, actual students that have ever signed a contract with me, like zero. Um, but when you talk about independent wrestlers, and now some of the guys that have made it into stunts, the I've touched hundreds and hundreds of guys now. <laughs> In their hearts. Yes. In their hearts, I've touched many of these talented young I'm not, see, I could have made, I could have made a double yeah, entendre. Yeah. Well, yeah, the yeah. double entendre works with me too. So yeah, that's, yeah. that's the worst. The part Michael of it. Jackson. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Uh, so, yeah. So, 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 mommies and daddies entrust their young eighteen-year-olds to you, though. Though. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, 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 they. I guess to some degree. I, I don't think I get many eighteen-year-olds. I'd how say. Much, how old? How, how old is the average? I would say most of the guys that I get in there are, are usually around twenty to twenty-five, and mm -hmm. the reason is I seem I seem to be everybody's safety net in professional wrestling. Like, there's a lot of really, really. Really, 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 really bad wrestling schools out there. Now. I believe it Just because like, it was the Wild Samoan Training Center, yep. like the, the Monster Factory, uh, WCW's there's Power two, Plant, and, and South, Kowalski's. There was one in South Jersey too. I remember that was the Monster Factory, oh, probably. Okay. Um, that was back in the '90s and in, in early 2000s. Now there's almost one in every town. Like, and I mean it because it's like, and these, people, and these are the people that got fired by Alpha, the mm -hmm. Wild Samoan, or got fired by somebody else, and they don't like the way their lives have played out. So they went out and spent instead of another three thousand on another train center, three thousand on a ring, and opened their own company. So and, and so fanboys are running the business. It, it, so basically, they could only teach you to a point. The yeah. same way when someone's like, "Hey, I, I hey, I, I got a, a belt in uh, Muay Thai, but they only got the first belt, but they're training, and they only can get you so Correct. far." Or Correct. the jiu-jitsu guys. It's it, happening. And same thing with all these MMA Oh, you're a third-degree black belt? Oh, you're completely self-trained. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's, yeah. It's, yeah. it's happened. There's the MMA Ooh. explosion. Even all the traditional schools that were losing business just said, oh, we could teach MMA. Well, we didn't really learn that. Yeah. So it's like... It's, it's the like stamp. these life coaches who go, well, I'm sympathetic. I can tell you to cheer up. And yeah, I'm a life coach. Anyway, maybe a little... No, I know. I Trust me. I thought about going down a life coach oh. area just because... Oh, you could speak well, and you can make people feel better about themselves because you're charismatic, <laughs> and you can make money off of this. Yeah. You know, like oh, it could have, unfortunately, yeah. I could, I could, how, how do you separate the love you had as a kid for the business compared to what you went through versus this is this my good, my, my opinion today as far as when I had my falling out with Garrett and I never went back to the the, the wrestling business. There was it wasn't because of him. Mm -hmm. It was because the way I didn't like the way the business was going mm -hmm. with entertainment. I didn't like the kayfabe thing was out. But most of all, I didn't like the internet stage of all these fans of no one's a fan. They all work for a wrestling site. They're or, all cosplayers. Yes. They're it's, all part of the show. Like, I wouldn't have done that. Here's what should happen next. I didn't want to be around that. If you're not going to enjoy what, we're, what, what I, what you were doing, I don't want to be a part of it. 
it's now you, you you've kind of hit where I'm at today. As I've said to many people around me, I hear the dice rolling in my life again mm -hmm. because I've lost a lot of my passion for mm -hmm. professional wrestling. The 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 court case is part of it. The other part of it is is very much this generation. Yeah. And it every that when you when you're in the generation that everybody gets a trophy, they don't it's, understand geez. that not everybody gets a trophy in right. real life. You need to know you need to learn how to lose. I hate yeah. that. Yeah, really true. You have to know what it's it, like. Is that just, pervasive that every everyone wins self image BS? At, that's why you're a professional wrestler, because you have low self image. Yeah. It's because you felt that there's something more special. And I, I can say it's about everybody I've ever known, probably yourself and, and myself and Garrett included. Because we know there's some sort of a light inside of us that we believe is special. And Un, as opposed to you, me, and Garrett, we weren't constantly told, you're right, that light is special. No. That's the difference. In yeah, fact, yeah. we were told to con con condense that light, yes. yeah. is, is we believe we're special, and professional wrestling was just one of our art forms that we fell in love with, and that was the way we shined our light. Yeah. And I think... You got that 30,000 Italian moment, right? I right. think shining the light is, is a big part of that is the struggle of the darkness. I, I, think, I think the only way you could truly be somebody who is truly has that glow mm -hmm. is is by some by understanding how repressive the darkness is like, I, and by by having those right. embracing it and losing and losing and losing and losing and picking yourself back the fuck up yes. and and to not go into the that that other story that's 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 the the the, the entire thing of the most recent podcasting that's yeah. at the end of the day the moral of that story is pick yourself back up don't yeah. let anything in your life break you and and that's at the end of the day, but you that's, have to be realistic too and get trained, but keep going. Yeah, no, I, and that's these kids, they can be broken, and Very that's fine. Very easy, and they stay there. And they get stuck. Yes. Oh, okay. And, and what no I've, I've seen a lot of these kids is it's no longer their fault they're not succeeding. Yes. It's my fault. Oh, God. Yeah. It's my fault as, as the as a supervisor, as the person who is doing the scripting or the person that's doing the training. It's not the fact that they can't, that they're not good. Yeah. Some of them, some of them just flat out. Some not of them good. aren't built for that. Some of them, how it is. And, and then the other end of it, some just aren't built for it too. Yes. That you, you look like shit. So I can't do it. I'm not going to make you, you my don't champion. Have any mic skills. I, you don't you walk can't the, talk. You can't walk the aisle. That's a big thing. That's a word. That's a thing that people. I, I always said you can't walk the aisle. Anyone can walk out the aisle, but you, no, you have to have some. You have talk. to have a light. You yes, have to have a, you have to have bring a, the spark. And when I say light, it's not just energy because i see people like, ah, i'm energetic yeah, yeah, but they're yeah. hollow they're hollow like uh, i think the one thing i hope that you can feel that, that you can feel in this in this interview is that this I energy like is coming from right here in me and yep. it, it's very passionate energy and that passionate energy has come from a well, lifetime trans. of being and broken and that, told no that, that, it's that, translated it's translated yes it yeah is. And, that, and that was a weird thing because i since i was a kid all i cared about was like the four horsemen and i was like this is what i'm going to do and when him i garrett when we went through our phases and i started realizing like I'm not liking this. I'm not enjoying myself. There's a hell of a lot of drugs here. Everyone's like, stick this needle in your ass. I'm not doing it. There was a lot of drugs. And I started these. getting massive headaches after everything because, oh, this guy doesn't know how to punch. He's hitting me with his forearm because oh, yeah. he, cause, cause he, he, he watched some he's... Japan videos. Yeah. And I'm giving it right back. Well, the, 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 the fact of the matter is when I got home, I'm sitting in a dark room holding my head and I'm not taking anything stronger than Tylenol. Yeah. And my lower back starting to bother me. I'm like... Am I really going to walk away from all this? It was the weirdest thing. I'm like, I'm definitely taking time off. And that's what I did. And that's and then I went to MMA, which in a weird way was better on my body. Because I could, because could, you know what you're prepared for. Yes. Yeah. You, you know to you, protect yourself 100% of the time. The I was in pro wrestling. You can go the I'm giving you my body. Yeah. Yes. I'm saying, here's my body. Go yes. do, like, if you're going to hit me hard, if you're gonna, whatever it is. Here's my body. It's presented to you. And it's your job to protect me now. Yes. In MMA or amateur wrestling, yeah. I never got hurt in amateur yeah, wrestling. Yeah, it's, 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 it's You're on the offense. You know what you're doing. Yeah. I, I, I no know how to control dance. my... It and was, I know who's coming at me. It They're, was the weirdest thing when I said, I'm done. I'm like, I'm going to get back to this. And in a small part so, of my head, I just knew. I'm like, I'm really done. So these kids, these kids become whiny bitches. They don't accept um, re their responsibility. They're mm. not good. That must be frustrating. Yeah, very much. Well, again, I, I think that it's, you know, the, the these kids that then who can't succeed on their own talent or their own ability or something like that. In the state of Pennsylvania, one of the things I argue with the State Athletic Commission is, all you need to be able to do to be a professional wrestling promoter, you could be a professional wrestling promoter by paying the state $100 for the license and getting a, uh, a, a the, I think it's a $10,000 bond, which is another $100 on another insurance policy. But then you, who knows nothing about what you're doing, mm -hmm. 
can be in control over 16 guys that you get to just point and say, all right, you versus you, you versus you, you versus you, and, and, and this one's, and whoever's yeah. underlined wins. Wow. Yeah. So now the fanboy is in charge. Now the person who doesn't know anything about protecting the guys doesn't like, so like as a stunt, from a stunt coordinating side of things, mm -hmm. they're not stunt coordinating shit. They're saying, here's the list. You win, you lose, and then they walk away. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. And then they let uh, you guys work it out. Yeah. And, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> I'd now, rather do it. There's guys that I'll let do that if, <laughs> if I trust them as veterans, but then there's also rules like at the sanctuary. And one of the things about sanctuary is I said for the first two years of it, I did professional wrestling. At some point, I realized it's broke. <laughs> Pro wrestling is broke. And I was just constantly losing money and constantly looking at this like, this is just. It, I, I hate to, I don't want to call it dead. It's just, it's rebirth into something that I don't, I don't relate with. No, I don't, I don't, I don't identify with this version of pro wrestling. I was a professional wrestler. I don't know what it is today. It's, it, I, it's like pro wrestling cosplay is, is the best way I keep saying it is, uh, you know, kids play dress up and instead of dressing up as your favorite superhero, I'm going to create my own, you know, yeah, and, yeah. and it's, it's, it's a different era and a different generation. So what are you doing with the sanctuary? Are you still doing it? Sanctuary is now a stunt studio, and that's when I started putting in the big pads, and that's when I started changing a lot of elements about the way guys have to work. Because that, when I came in at pro wrestling, I, my my champion was a big guy named Atu, about six foot three, two hundred and seventy pounds of just big black muscle, like like big 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 scary man. He was the god king, and he beat the shit out of a few men in the ring, you know. Like, but when we transitioned to stunt studio. We, we, all right, all right, Otto, you can't kill this guy. And you can't, do it. you know, it's like, yeah. we're, we're, we're doing this now, and I need to know every single move that you're going to do in this. And because part of if I am training these guys to be able to transition from professional wrestler to stunt and stage actor is knowing the, the, the choreography and being able to go and repeat the exact same thing 10 times in a row right, yeah. from any one of my camera angles that I need to change it out to. We do everything live and it's fine, but if, if I, there's been plenty of times where I've yelled cut on set where I've seen a bump gone wrong, that things that no indie wrestling company would ever, ever, ever. So when you talk about kayfabe, it's dead. Like, like, it, I, it, I, especially. I hate, I hate that era. I hate that. Specifically at the sanctuary, it's gone, gone, because I really present it like, look, we're here filming an episode of Glow today. You know, like, mm -hmm. it's not. To do the kind of pro wrestling that we would fall in love with. I, I just don't, I don't know how to do the reset properly, you know, and I don't know how you get something that now is universally recognized as fake to I think, now. I, I think you got, you got to kayfabe the world way like Flair and Steamboat would go into a, a fast food restaurant in 82 mm -hmm. and realize they didn't mean to, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and one would go get the other one's face. Yeah. I think, I, I think that's like the only way and it's a lot of work. And I don't it's, think these contract that wrestlers are going to care to do that. I, I don't, and that's it. Is yeah, I think yeah. that they just universally recognize themselves as entertainment, and that's fine. But if they're going to be universally recognized as entertainment, then they they really need to entertainment it up too. Then you know, like like it seemed like they focused so much on transitioning to that super indie style and pace, and lost all elements of. And I, it's a softening of society, but we lost all elements of character with and acting, with without a doubt. And I also think like. The fan base where I came from, the, that ECW arena crowd, mm. I think everybody turned into that. So now you got thirty thousand people doing. They, they're part of the show. Their signs important. Hey, I, I, I do, I do a podcast. Uh, yeah, you, you, you know, like I'm gonna. I, they're live streaming the pay per view. Why? <laughs> this? How about watch the match, <laughs> escape from reality, and let the boys do their thing? I. I did, that's, that's another reason I can't go back. We were talking about Creed 2 a little bit like that and how a lot of people so really the, you, just came out to you, do that just to be part of the experience. Right. And that's kind of the same thing now. It's like, we just want it to be part of the experience even though we know it's fake. You know, I, and I think you're right. The, the fans almost are that person that's missing that inside of them. And it's like, I need to be, my sign counts. I, my, I matter. <laughs> yeah. I, no, you Even don't. No. <laughs> no. Where was, no. Where was this Creed 2 fight scene from? Uh, the Philadelphia, the Naval Yards or something, something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and Hard that was, I was down, that down there for like for a, a week for a couple things on that. And again, it was, it was extra junk work. But I mean, it was something that I, you know, I, I'm somebody that will take work, with, especially when, it's sag rate because sag rate, there's no such thing on a movie, especially something like Creed 2, that you're going to go eight hours. Mm -hmm. It's always going to be a 12 plus hour day. Yep. And once you're at sag rate, you're, I think you're usually about 20 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. I, I think it's like 160 mm -hmm. for the day and then it's overtime and then double yep. time. It doesn't then, get old though? You don't do it all the time? You don't run no, it out? No, 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 no,
film work in Philadelphia. It, it, yeah, I'd prefer to be. And, and I wouldn't be willing to drive to New York City for the same rate. Right, right, right. Um, it. it I'm 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 also a stuntman too, and I don't want to ever become known as an extra. You no, know what I mean? It's, you it's, gotta watch your yeah. You got you gotta watch. It, can we can we talk about that though? Work sure. At Nick like Nick Cage, Mickey Rourke, uh, Josh, who people you've worked so, with. So yes, so you got to train the great Mickey Rourke for Mickey. the wrestler. For anyone else, great film. Know, great film. Anybody else that's really from with the wrestler? This was the referee at the end of the ma- the, the final match. Oh, that was match. you. Yeah, yes. yeah, that was the final match. And then when, that's when he probably dies, right? Yeah. I guess we think. Well, we don't we don't know, and yeah. I, it's not like on the script. It didn't. I didn't. When I look at the script, it didn't go. That's Mickey dies. Movie, it doesn't what, say. That's what makes it, you're supposed to just take what what you think. My mm-hmm. answer to that question, though, because I get it a lot, is I sure hope so. Yeah. Because sure. if he didn't die, yeah. he's now back in a hospital. <laughs> sans girlfriend, uh, sans daughter. Uh-huh. You know, his it, back to the trailer, which I'm not even sure he can get into anymore. Remember yeah. they locked it up. Like, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, I think that you know, let's hope he died yeah. doing what he loved yeah. passionately in front of a good crowd. And he was if not, he was a huge star in the eight. They don't really explain how he lost it. He was well known in the 80s, right? Boxing, wasn't he? He walked he, away from He himself. walked away from the sport, made a lot of uh, problems, too, before he left. And then, and then, with that trail then, home then, he, got, then he got short-term memory loss. Oh. You can't be a conservative in Hollywood, yeah. either. Then he was he was very he, outspoken he, in, yes. about that. And, and that, he could also kick your ass, because he was a big dude. Yeah, and he, and he wouldn't fight. fuck around. Yeah, he'd be, Exactly. Yeah. So when you go back to Hollywood, and you're just like, oh, now you want back in? Oh, did you get plastic surgery and you're not Oh, we're talking about anymore? the real Mickey Rock. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about the wrestler. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm talking about the character well, of the wrestler. Well, the character of the wrestler, he was, he was a huge star in the 80s. Oh, no, huge star in the 80s. Absolutely, yeah. And then you never would say he's why he didn't follow. Oh, probably that, that, like, the same reason every star in the 80s, did. they all fade out. They also fade out. But he was broke. All they have is wrestling. What he said in the opening of the show, the same way I will say, I will always say as a film guy too, I have a day job. Yeah. Watch your money. <laughs> and those old wrestlers like Randy the Ram's character did not do that. None. And that's why he oh, opens up in a trailer park. Because in the movie, many... people kept on recognizing him. He was still famous in some ways. His face was recognizable. Sure, absolutely. Yeah. And again, I think that... But he was in a trailer park. Most of the wrestlers from the golden age of professional wrestling in that 1980s time, yeah. uh, in, in WWF, mm-hmm. if you saw them out in public and you were a fan of that time, you would absolutely recognize them. I would also say most of those guys, you can find out in public now because they, they're not... Hulk Hogan is a, is probably the only one I could say it's like Except a millionaire mm-hmm. and, 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 and separate. He had that loss. Everybody too. else is is broken down. Really? And and yeah. and, and, and just don't they probably did, did they Randy Rad Piper died. They, they just when didn't. all you have is wrestling, you don't have anything after. And, yep. it, it, and they did get injured. They did do steroids. They did have bone and heart and everything. I, I also say with all that aside, regardless of how you turn out, just your finances are your finances. Like, yeah. Just please take care of that. Right, right. What do you do away. when it's only your job for like five years? Like, a lot of these guys only were up there five, ten years tops. Yep. And then when you're out of that, you're not getting the $100,000 a year. You're getting now yeah. 50, then 30, then 20. As, as, <laughs> you know, open, opening a, up a, a, a great, a line, great, a a great quote out, out of uh, Jim Ross, he used to always say, it's not about how much you make, it's about how much you save. Correct. So anyway, getting back to Mickey Rock. Yeah. When you wor- worked with Mickey, was he crazy or you could work with him? Insane. I mean, Insane. Even when you really you uh, fear you, for yourself, or you could take. No, care. I don't know. I fear for myself. I he was training him. I don't. See yeah, him. I. I, <laughs> he I, him. I just think that, like, compared to any other actor that I've dealt with, I would say that. Now, here's a cool thing about Mickey. Mickey is also completely a normal dude, as far as like a guy that you go out in the bar and be able to have a, a you really can just good, talk to him. Y- yeah, sure, yeah, but him. there's also the part of him too that is. It's almost like a, a, I don't want to call it bipolar by any means, but it's, it's, there's a part of him that does very much realize that he's Hollywood and that if you if you cross a certain line with him, he's a little bit, like he, oh, just, I think, I, I think the term Mickey. that we use is that he was, he always lived on planet Mickey, okay. is it, and, and that it was Hurricane Mickey walking in the building. Like, you it was, she never knew it, it was just a storm coming and race, <laughs> band down the hatches and here we go. You know, but, like but, a rock but you, star. You were also or, training a guy at the time was what fifty four or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, it, so, it, and he it, and he's and he actually held up. I'm sure there was a learning curve, but we yeah. were kind of impressed of like. But he'd been beaten up in boxing, done lots of drugs, and he was you know. And, and, yeah, I, I don't think he's ever not really been in shape though. That's one thing the, about him. Yeah, I don't think I've said this in an interview yet. I I'd say that myself and Tommy Swade and the stunt coordinator uh, were brilliant in the way that we constructed a lot of matches on the movie The Wrestler because 
if you go back and you actually rewatch it, uh, Mickey doesn't take a lot of bumps. He doesn't take a front bump, back bumps. He, everything he takes a lot of times is rolls mm -hmm. because Mickey's got, you know, blown back, blown shoulders. So front bumps are out. Blown mm -hmm. back makes and a screwed up neck. That makes back bumps out. Mm -hmm. You're definitely not getting flip bumps out of him. So everything that you're kind of getting out of him is either rolls and like he's got some good strikes and stuff like that. And we taught him some lucha stuff like an up and over where he put his legs. And he has, he was an extremely athletic guy. So like he still had a lot of stuff like that just... 54 and you can't beat the hell out of a 54 year old yeah, anymore yeah. you know and what about a uh, nick cage besides cracking <laughs> <laughs> he's great uh <laughs> nick cage is uh i i liked i got along with nick cage better than i did mickey rourke uh because mickey rourke pure jock like and that's cool and i get along with jocks but i'm also like again i'm a dweeb i'm, I'm very much a, a, a dork techie kind of you read, you read books. And yeah, I'm, 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 I'm intelligent. Um, there's, <laughs> the, Nick Cage is a dork, and it was clear there that we both, dork, right? we very much got along on dork, but literally when I first met him, when he walked in the room, he was like, I am Nick Cage. And I was like, are you doing a bit with me? Right, like, right. Is, this, is this really you, Nick? Right. And, and, and it, was, it was him, and I was like, holy shit, you're the guy who literally is this guy. Like, like the, you're, you don't act in the movies. You're just, you say your lines, because this is who mm -hmm. you are. Um... And, and kind it was of that irreverence, breezy, kind yeah, of wise act. Yeah, yeah. It, it was, he's, and it was a really neat experience because I, I liked him. Again, I got along really well with him. The one thing about Nick, Nick didn't want to do his own stunts. Like, we brought him in there, and I remember on, on the first he day, did we did or didn't? Did not. Mm -hmm. uh, because and Darren Aronofsky was like, you're doing, everybody, like, Darren was like, you're doing your own stunts because I'm method. Like, yeah. like that, that's Darren. Right, right, right. Um, Nick took one back, but I remember his first one, and like, we do the short one, like, from the squat, yeah, that's yep, just like that. Yep. And he hit, and he just looks up and goes, ah, am I supposed to feel this reverberating <laughs> feeling in my neck? And I'm like, well, yeah, Nick, you fell down. Like, yeah. it's, hey, it's, a in the ring, it's, it's a fall, and the ring bounces, and you're, you're going to shake a little. Ah, I don't know. And then, like, his stuntman aces. His stuntman was able to just come and pick up everything instantly. How Nick, Nick wasn't have, a young man either. Nick how, had to be in his 40s. How long did you train Nick before and, the yeah, switch? Yeah. A month. I'd wow. say in about a month we were. That's when the budget got cut too, because because Nick was Nick was producing the movie too at one point. Nick, uh, I think we were probably at a fifteen to twenty uh, twenty million dollar movie, and Mickey, then went yeah. down to like a five right. or a because, four. Because Mickey was uh, yeah, was Mickey's not bringing a production. Yeah, Mickey, yeah. and then I think it was just all whoever the producers were at that time, uh -huh. and they expected all of it. And I think Nick expected it to be a Sundance Film Festival movie. Like nobody expected this thing to blow up to the levels up. that it did. Yeah, yeah. It was, it was, like a, a comeback it was also like a, in a way a lot more believable because everybody thought that was this Mickey Rourke playing what he currently was at the time. A uh, yeah, down. it's... Yeah, I think people felt You that. couldn't have casted a better character for it than Mickey because his own personal life reflected the story of it, which was mm -hmm. right, 80s right. actor, your big comeback moment, mm -hmm. you know, 80s wrestler, big comeback moment. Alienated like, lots of people. And, I'd, I'd say to some degree, I it was slightly ironic that that's, you know, the wrestler, he did, I think, uh, uh, was it Iron Man 2 after that? But yeah, it really yeah. kind of fizzled for him a little bit after that again. So uh -huh. uh, the Maybe wrestler... They, I think they got him 200000 at that because he, because he was still... He got beat up on that from, from Iron Man. Yeah. yeah. He got beat up, if I remember correctly. Cause, and, and while Martin Downey Jr. is fucking making yeah, millions. Yeah, we're talking yeah. about comebacks of comebacks. Yeah, yeah I mean, it, it, yeah. I, I, I can't even imagine how Mickey was sitting there just grinding his teeth on these scenes going, hmm, no, what, times what, what, were, what were you doing in, during, like, your, were you just doing school, like, in the daytime? I'm Teaching talk, college? Is, uh, well, yeah. This is, uh, this, this, this is the early 2000s. Don't forget, to, we only have about five minutes. So got gotcha, to, so I'm going into a, no. I'm going, going, going into a, ask him a big question here. So, yep. so but early 2000s in, into the wrestler, were yeah. you just doing the professor thing? Or were you doing yeah. That I, uh, I I graduated college at 23, and uh, I was teaching college at 23. So, wow. And and I and I I've been teaching college now 13 years. So there was this one part in the wrestler. I just don't know if this affects you as a as 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 a person, but affected me a lot. The part where Mickey Ward character says he needs more hours, and his boss tells him, "All I got is like the meat deli department, right?" So Mickey's character uh, goes. And he puts he puts all this this humiliating things on, and, and uh, there's like a doorway, and he starts pacing back and forth, and he's hearing his music, and he's hearing the cheers, and then he opens, and he's in this reality. Right. And I swear, I don't know about you, but every Monday morning when we were doing the wrestling, when from the ECW era and everything, mm -hmm. when I would punch in at work mm -hmm. in the daytime. That killed me. And when I saw that part in the theater, if anybody looked at me, there was tears in my eyes. That's the like, part. That's the part that broke me down. Like all these people mm -hmm. love me on the weekend, mm -hmm. and now I'm 
back in a factory in the uh, warehouse. And I time. remember it killed. Uh, did that yeah, part, no, I know. I I, I felt know the emotion of it. The yeah. only thing I can relate is as a teacher. Yeah, it it is. Teaching is very similar to pro wrestling. It's it's I'm the I'm the subject matter in the front of the classroom who has to then work thirty students instead. Mm -hmm. And uh, being a pro wrestler has very much trained me as much as my college education to be a teacher because now I can look my students in the eyes, say something funny and witty, connect with them on the subject matter while teaching them something, and then if they don't remember, I can remind them of the joke, which then can right, comes parallel right. back to oh that's right that. So having a personality and being able to speak is a very very good trait as yeah. as, a, as a teacher. So. What, the, 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 they they paralleled for me. What would you say? Because we're getting more close sure. to end. What were like the highlights of of your career? I mean, what, what would you say it really just stuck out like, in in pro wrestling? Pro wrestling, the Italy, entire era. Like, Italy what, sounds big. Yeah, what, Italy, what, Italy is the biggest thing. The Italy. If you said to me, John, the biggest things that you you did in professional wrestling, Italy is the biggest. Well, um, people wanted to touch you if you walked through the like, crowd. Italy, like, Italy was was enormous because it. I had creative control for as long as I wanted in the ring. I used to work in fifteen minute matches with, in front of very large crowds. Number two would be uh, SmackDown, just because everybody recognizes SmackDown. Mm -hmm. So I wrestled Mark Henry on SmackDown in 2006. Uh, and actually, that, that would be actually probably number three. Number two would be the wrestler, uh, because the rest, and actually wrestlers should take first, because you know, no matter whether I wrestled on SmackDown, hundreds of guys are jobbers on SmackDown. Hundreds of guys have had contracts and do all this. I have the ability to say to anybody who is a wrestling fan, hey, you see the movie The Wrestler? Yeah, it's I was a referee. And, you know, yeah. I have an immediate go-to moment in your brain that makes you go, ah, oh, awesome. Yeah. You know, like, like, and there's, I, I'd say the wrestler, so then the wrestler, clearly. Mm -hmm. um, the most fun, Italy. Uh, the biggest personal achievement, say, having the ability to say, I've worked for WWF. You know what I mean? That's, that, that I'd say is, like, What's as, the as a child. What's the future then? You don't know. Uh, uh, for, for, for me or for Sanctuary? For you. For me, uh, the dice is rolling. And I'm, I love it. And I'm very excited for what the next decade will bring me. Um, I think uh, as I ended my pro wrestling career, I said this is the end of part one of my journey, you know, and I got, I'm destined for much greater things. Uh, part two has wrapped up, I think, and I, I think I'm entering a, my, my third act of my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm very stunt, interested stunt to see work so. yeah, stunt work and, and, and other things too. I'm, I'm very interested to see where my life takes me over the next couple of years. I, I think it's going to be an interesting ride. Come back. So, so the sanctuary is, is sanctuary. The main thing right sanctuary now. is my my personal passion. It, that's my, to some degree, it's my midlife crisis, my pink Corvette. You know what I mean? It, it's it's one of those sort of things that I, I probably only sunk into that as much as some people sink into their their Corvette as their midlife crisis. It, mm -hmm. it, it's like when you, if I were to tell you the price and and money I've dumped into that, you'd be like, how have you gone by for? I guess years you're like still that? single. <laughs> uh, no, I'm I'm very very happily partnered, and I have yeah. a, a tremendous relationship, uh, and uh, that is by far the best thing in my life. By oh, by by you. far by far by so far. So someone wakes you up at night in the morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it, it's it's you know what? It's perfection. I have I I am I have a perfect perfect world in that world, mm -hmm. it, and I have had that for about five years now, and I couldn't ask for anything else. That's that that that's my world. Can you still wrestle? Can you uh, some uh, some? I, I have a uh, today's what th uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah, uh, Wednesday, uh, Thursday, I'm doing stunts tomorrow up in New York. I don't know what it is. It might be Punisher. I'm not sure. Uh, and then Friday will probably be one of my last. It's not pro wrestling. It's still stunts. But, I mean, the last simulated simulated pro wrestling match I think I'm going to have for a real long time. Because mm -hmm. um, you had the three discs a lot. I mean, yeah. Must have I, I can't. I'm not I'm not supposed to do any of this anymore. And I, I shouldn't even be doing stunts. I mean, if, if you really broke it down and you, you broke down all my body injuries, they'd be like, no, nah, you shouldn't do any of this. I'm going to do it because I... I'm passionate about the sanctuary. I'm passionate about the, the the stunt world still, and until my body says you can't anymore, I'm going to continue doing it uh, because you only got one life to live, and I'm going to live it today. Gotcha, gotcha. We didn't even get into Pat Oswalt, but anyway, go yeah. on. So, uh, if you want to look in that camera and do any of your plugs, how how anyone could contact your website, the sure. sanctuary. Uh, John Trosky, you can find me on Facebook, John Patrick Trosky. Uh, you can please follow the sanctuary at facebook.com backslash sanctuary PA. You can follow us on Twitter at sanctuary PA TV. Uh, Instagram's the same at sanctuary PA TV. Uh, YouTube is youtube.com backslash sanctuary PA TV. And Twitch now we live stream on on twitch.com backslash sanctuary PA TV. So that's probably your best way to get in contact with me and, and, and track down any of the information and stuff that we're doing there. Um, and of course, watching the show on Facebook Live would be archived and everything. We have yes, the Dark so well. Military Blu-ray. Blu the Dark Military Blu-rays are being pressed right now, so it's been—we it, all know—it's been like three years of my life. So, uh, hopefully, 
could be available as early as next month. I don't want to give the date until I see those goddamn things in, in my presence because I don't want to jinx anything. But next month, I will drop all that info, and you guys can come and finally buy my art. Well, John, you're a compelling character, and I'm sure your story will continue. And there will also be another Breezing with Beer and in August.